Growing up, uh, I always wanted to be a cowboy. You know, I, the family I grew up in, we didn't have a lot of money. Like, we lived good, but we were never, like, really, really wealthy or anything. So I grew up having to work from the time I was a little kid. We were always working cows. It's a real tight-knit tight, tight knit neighborhood around here, so we were always going around to help the neighbors do this and that. I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And so growing up, me and my brothers, you know, people would call, hey, come help us do this, come help us do that. And we started day working. And when I got into to junior high and stuff, you know, I got my farmer's permit and everything. And I needed fuel money to be able to go do whatever I wanted because any money that I made was my spending money. So I started riding colts for people outside horses and stuff. And then uh, once I got into high school, I convinced the uh, Brody Peak, he owns a sale barn in Emporia, to let the school let me out on Wednesdays to go work the sale barn. I loved it. It opened an avenue for more day work and catching more cows for people. So that was kind of my upbringing of my younger years. I rodeo for a living. That's my job is to drive bucking horses. But when I get to come home, it's my vacation time, and it takes my mind off of rodeo. And, and, um, like right now, we've been calving really heavy. We're pretty well getting finished up with that and getting ready to go to grass. So um, since the NFR, every day ride through cows, check cows, uh, doctor calves, you know, whatever it may be. And then now that we're coming up on May and stuff like that, we'll uh, start doing a lot more day work, helping people get to grass, helping them work the cows and calves. As long as you're doing what you love, you're not working a job. It's considered work, but I, I really, it, I don't see it as work. You know, there's no better feeling in the world than getting to come home and, and get on one of your colts or your good horses that you've had forever, you know, going to check cows or drag calves. It's kind of what I live for, really. I take great pride in what I get to do because it's, a, it's an art of a dying breed. So 2019 was my first year on my card. That was my rookie year. It was probably the most exciting feeling that I had ever felt in my life was getting in the first 4th of July summer run, getting ready to go rodeo. And I always found a, a way to win when I was starting to think that I was running out of money, you know, and, and uh, looking back, I, I kind of, I don't miss those days, but dang, it was, it was just the fun and the struggle of it, and uh, I ended up, I was winning the Rookie of the Year by like twelve or $13,000, and I came up to uh, Lovington, New Mexico, and I uh, tore my hamstring. Um, it was August 8th. And uh, so I had to sit out the rest of the year and I ended up losing the Rookie of the Year to Garrett Shadbolt by a couple hundred dollars. And it was, it was hard to process at that time, but I'm glad I had to go through it. It made me grow my mental game better and uh, it made me want to go rodeo and go win more because I didn't like having to sit at home and, and watch. Uh, you know, I was on the way to make my first NFR and I had to sit at home and there was nothing I could do about it. I said to sit and watch and it was freaking sucked. Uh, 2020, that was my first year I got to make the NFR and it was also the year of COVID. The winter was going good and we got to Houston and they shut everything down and it was a blessing in disguise almost. I got to go home and, and work out and I bettered myself. I got to take advantage of the, the six or eight weeks, whatever it was, you know. Um, I was working at my girlfriend's family's ranch out in Colorado that whole time, riding colts and taking care of their cows and stuff. And when we got to go back rodeo on it was it was really tough. There was only about a quarter of the rodeos that happened for a regular season. So you were batting it off with the top 50 bareback riders in the world everywhere that you went. There was just no getting away from them. So you had to draw and you had to ride that much better. And I ended up breaking some ribs in Filer, Idaho uh, later in that fall. And I was on the bubble to make the NFR. I sat two weeks off and, and uh, I just had to go finish the season with broken ribs and it was it was tough and it was kind of one of those deals, keep your nose on the grindstone, pain only hurts for a minute, you know. But uh, so I ended up making my first NFR and, and it was, I think, probably the toughest season that I've seen of pro rodeo on just because there was no getting away from everybody else. And it was the best feeling in the world, you know, knowing that I'd made my first NFR, it's what I'd dreamed of my whole life. It was more nerve-wracking knowing that I had made it because I knew that I had to go show up with the best 14 other guys in the world for 10 days straight and um, it gave me a new outlook, made me want to go work harder and, and be a better bareback rider and a better person and 
Um, when I got there, I can remember walking in and setting my gear bag down, and uh, I thought, man, we're, we're really fixing to do this. I took it one horse at a time. I had a goal going in there. Um, I wanted to win the average and see where that put me for a world title. I didn't even pay any attention to where I was until it was like round eight, you know, and I ended up winning the eliminator round and uh, put me in the lead for the average, and I thought, hey, this is right where I wanted to be. And, and uh, you know, God, he's got a special way of making that stuff work. You're the only one that can nod your head, and you're the only one that can control this. And, and there's nobody else here, their opinions, or anybody else. It doesn't matter. I just need to show up and prove that I belong here. And, and uh, that's what I did. And I ended up winning the average uh, as a rookie in Texas. You know, it was, uh, it was definitely something special. Uh, my focus going into to 2021, um, after winning the average at the NFR for my first year, it, it made me want to. It made me want to be better. It's when it's kind of it's it gets in your blood once you can get so close that you can taste and you can feel that gold buckle, and it's what you've prepared your whole entire life for. Just went rodeo, and I told myself that even if I didn't draw the horse that I knew I could win the rodeo on, I was dang sure going to try to win second. Had it the best Fourth of July that I could ask for, and. Uh, Carried that momentum on the rest of the year, and and I climbed, you know, from like 11th or 12th up to I think fifth or sixth in the world there, um, end of August, and you know I got a concussion. And I was kind of getting burnt out just a little bit, you know, and I didn't want to mess myself up because the concussion was pretty serious. So I just sat home for the last three weeks, and and uh, but I I knew that I was in a lot better spot uh, making the NFR that year than I was beforehand. You know, I had the concussion, went through other protocols and realized that I was cleared enough to go day work and be on a horse and stuff again, you know, but it wasn't advised to get on a bucking horse. So when I went to college, that was part of my scholarship was to be a pickup man. And uh, so coach let me pick up at our home rodeo and then that let me pick up Sykeson's college rodeo. and. You know, I, I dang sure love it, probably just as much as I like riding bucking horses. The 2021 NFR, um, that was, I was excited. You know, I had a little momentum from the previous year. And it was my first year at the Thomas and Mac. To walk down the tunnel at the TNM, it's pretty awesome. And you now I told myself again, I'm the only one that can nod my head and do my job here, and I can't control what everyone else does. And I knew that I'd drawn good for the first round and uh, ended up going out there and winning the round. Drew get again in the second round. Just it just kept stair stepping and stair stepping, and I ended up winning four rounds uh, while I was out there at the NFR. Um, I placed in all the rounds except for the two hopper rounds, which you know everybody can ride a hopper, I guess, if they're at the NFR. It was just another another rodeo for me every day. I just had to get on one, and when it was over, I went to the next one, and and uh, just. You know, staying in that tunnel vision of knowing what I had to do, but making sure I take it all in and, and enjoying it all at the same time. Uh, when it came down to round 10, you know, I was I was in a real hunt for a world title. Um, there was going to have to be some freaky stuff happening in, in that 10th round for Casey not to win it. You know, I was knocking right on his back door. I just needed him not to place in the round, and, and I needed to win it. And I had gunfire at Frontiers. And, I knew that, that I had a really good chance to win the round and uh, you know it, if it was meant to be it was meant to be and if it wasn't it wasn't and that was where I was at with my life. I knew I just had to show up and I went out there and did my job. I was like 92 I think and ended up winning the 10th round and, and uh, Casey ended up getting the check and, and you know beat me uh, in the world. I won the average. Um, but I left there confident with what I did and knew that, that there was nothing that I needed to hang my head on. Uh, the windshield is a lot bigger than the rear view mirror and I did everything that I could possibly do while I was there. I felt like I rode outstanding and I drew good and, and uh, you know, there's always next year and that's what I got my sights on is a gold buckle. Being a cowboy for me is what I've wanted to be my whole life and I know that my rodeo career won't last for forever and uh, a lot of people consider themselves great rodeo athletes and everything but at the end of the day when I'm done and, and somebody's standing over my casket I want them to be able to think back and say that guy he was he was a hell of a cowboy. I take pride in uh, getting up early in the mornings and, and working and getting everything done that needs done and it don't matter what it takes. And uh, I, think, I think that's just part of life, you know, and that's why I like to get up every day and, and I live it every day.